Hello and welcome to a new episode of the Geek Town Behind the Scenes podcast. I'm your host Dave Elliott and I'm currently still away in the USA. However, earlier this week I did have a chance to virtually sit down with the wonderful Claire Lim, otherwise known as We Claire. Claire is a presenter, Twitch streamer, podcast host and all around generally lovely human being. If you've ever been to an MCM Comic Con, you will know Claire because she's one of the main stage panel hosts for that show. You may also know her from her work on BBC The Social. She appears on Colin Murray's show on BBC Radio 5 Live. She works for the NME. She also has her own Real Imagine Futures podcast, which is fantastic. You should go and check that out. Or a myriad of other interviews and hosting projects around the internet and TV. She's all over the place. In this interview, we discuss Claire's approach to interviewing and some of her favourite guests. She was recently hosting the main stage at MCM Birmingham, which of course I missed because I'm away right now. So I wanted to get her thoughts on the show and how she thought things went and uh, also get a little bit behind the scenes info about the panels, which was really, really fun. We also discuss how she got started in the presenting world and we also have a random discussion about The Walking Dead, which she's a huge fan of and knows some of the cast and we we're coming up to the finale of it as well so uh, we talk a little bit about that as well it was lovely to be able to catch up with her uh, she's going to be presenting at wales comic con which i will also be at when we get back so um, that will be awesome it's the first time she's done that but it was really fun to sit down and just be able to chat with her about all her work and uh, all the stuff she's doing and stuff she's got coming up as well if you want to hear more behind the scenes interviews don't forget to subscribe wherever you get your podcast by searching for geek town Radio. Radio. This will also give you our weekly Geek Town Radio podcast, which brings you all the latest TV, film, and gaming news. You can also go to the website at geektown.co.uk for daily news stories and all the latest UK and US TV premiere dates. We will be back with normal shows in a couple of weeks, as I mentioned in the previous episode. I'm still away in America, but we will be back soon for normal episodes. But in the meantime, check out this interview with the wonderful Claire Lim, a.k.a. We Claire. Thank you for coming on and uh, sitting down to chat a little bit about you and your work. And it's going to be a really interesting one to talk to you because usually we're doing this the other way around and I'm in the UK and it's somebody in America I'm interviewing. This time I'm in America, you're in the UK. And also you interview people for a living. So this must be kind of strange for you as well. <laughs> it's very strange. I'm slightly nervous about how I'm <laughs> going to come across because nobody's ever interested in the person who's doing the interview. No. <laughs> So now I'm thinking, am I incredibly boring? Like, <laughs> I wonder what you're going to ask me. So yeah, here we go. <laughs> well, let's find out. <laughs> so before we start and talk a bit about your work, just a little bit about you and how you kind of ended up getting into interviewing people for a living. Okay. Well, I've always wanted to be some sort of presenter just purely because I'm really interested in people genuinely and uh, when I was younger um, I liked chatting about things like pop culture stuff so the earliest memory I have is me and my little brother making before podcasts were podcasts <laughs> we got our cassette tape thing and we um, recorded an, a Red Dwarf after show <laughs> nice. Uh, that's how nerdy we were in the 90s and uh, we would go over the script and we would re recite the lines and we would talk about our funny the funniest moments of that episode we would kind of like go over it so like I, I really loved doing that I liked talking about pop culture TV film and then I eventually started writing fanzines in the 90s but they were predominantly they were music fanzines I had a Idlewild fanzine called Broken Violin and I loved interviewing people bands because music was my first love. I played guitar and I thought that I was going to work in the music industry forever. I'm a real music nerd. So I really, really, really wanted to do that. And then eventually I got sidetracked because, you know, your parents are like, that's not a proper job. <laughs> uh, so that's, I ended up working, in the, sort of working in the media and sort of in the background and in the fringes uh, in television and stuff and production. 
and I didn't enjoy I always enjoyed I didn't find it creative enough for me yeah. um, I wanted to be creative you know I wanted to be a comic book artist or you know creating shows or something like that so I just wasn't ever creative enough for me and eventually through my work doing PR I'd met this producer at BBC The Social and he had said to me oh you know we're launching this platform called you know BBC The Social and would you like to be a contributor do you have any ideas anything you want and I was like hell yeah so I started doing a series called The Science Behind the Fiction which is on YouTube and it's on BBC The Social's YouTube channel and it was just me kind of exploring the science behind the fiction like transporters and <laughs> parallel universes because I'm a, I'm a nerd as you can tell so uh, that's where I started and then I just kept going and going and going and eventually my first big I guess celebrity interview was Jeff Goldblum for BBC The Social and nice. I, I just loved it so much so I just kept going and running with it and that's that's where I started basically yeah I mean Jeff Goldblum's a pretty good big first interview that must have been horrifically nerve wracking <laughs> yes it was I was so nervous because when you do these junkets it was the first time I'd ever done a junket so now I'm I'm very good at knowing how many questions to ask in five minutes, 10 minutes, 45 minutes, an hour. I can tell you exactly how many questions you'll need. But back then I had like 10 questions, you know, and, yeah. and then I knocked it down to five and then I kept thinking, okay, like, but what if I, I, I just didn't really know how to react or be, you know? So when I went in, um, I have a chicken bag called Gilbert that you may, you probably will see on YouTube at some point on an MCM stage or somewhere else, you'll see the chicken bag. So <laughs> I carry it everywhere with me and um, I took that in and immediately he went, oh my God, the chicken. Oh my God, the chicken. And I was like, and that immediately just disarmed him and disarmed me. And then we just chatted and Mm -hmm. the interview ran over a little bit and he didn't want me to leave. He's like, oh no, no, please, can we keep going? And the PR just wouldn't let me. me That was a great compliment. And I, and at that point I thought, yeah, I love interviewing people. I I just like vibing with people Mm -hmm. um, from all different walks of life. I love strange creative of people because I'm a strange creative person so like I like weird brains and so yeah that's love bloomed from there and then I still get a little bit nervous nowadays but really not as much anymore that was super nerve-wracking but after that it got better yeah that first one is quite a lot the first one I did was it was a phone interview with George Takei amazing this is the first one I did and uh, it was just around the time that the J.J. Abrams movies had come out and but they were promoting some DVDs of the sort of original track and literally before he hands me over he goes uh, oh by the way don't ask anything about the new movies and here's oh, no. <laughs> and here's George and so it's like half the questions or you know a bunch of the questions I suddenly couldn't use I was like uh, uh, okay uh, oh, so, no. that, so that sort of threw me and I did okay I got about three quarters of the way through the interview and then just froze because I'd sort of I'd misjudged the questions because I like you it was the first time I'd done it I had no idea I had about 20 minutes with him and I had no idea sort of how many questions I mean and I froze slightly and he was beautifully gracious and was like do you want to ask me what I'm doing next and I'm like yes yes let's do that <laughs> <laughs> well, at least he was great he, at least he was lovely that's it yeah, always he helps was. when you get a lovely person that really helps yeah he is absolutely adorable he's uh I think he's at Wales Comic Con next weekend which are you doing Wales I think I saw I something. am doing Wales and I do yes. have some panels can Confirmed, but I'm not 100% certain on them. I'm not too yeah. sure. I think I'm definitely doing the Walking Dead one. Right. Uh, and I've like, I think I've done like, this will be my fourth Walking Dead panel. <laughs> I'm like an expert at the Walking Dead at this point. Oh my God. So, and that, that actually is quite nice when you, when you do a panel with people you've met again and again, it gets easier. It just feels like you're talking to friends. So that's, that's actually, those will be my, those are my favorite times actually. Yeah. Cause I know at MCM this weekend, you did The Witcher, didn't you? I think. Yes. Um, uh, and they were sort of saying, yeah, you know, cause you've done them before. So, you know, they, they were kind of posting really nice things about how great it was to have you there as Steph so. <laughs> yeah Doug Cockle and I met in May and then we've become friends since then you know so I've seen him and his wife over summer at events or other things and it's nice now like the comic cons feel like school trips you know where you <laughs> they really are really great you know you see people you know there's quite a lot of people I knew there this weekend in Birmingham there's quite a few people I know in Wales so it feels like a school trip and you all have a great 
time and create fun for that weekend. You go out, you have drinks, you do your panels and then you don't see each other for months. And then again, you see each other again. And it just, it's lovely. It's just such a nice thing. Um, That's, you know, I'm a hermit the rest of the time when I'm not yeah. working. So this is where most of my social life is now. It's just yeah. these events, you know. So I um, I really, really enjoy Birmingham and Doug Cockle and the Witcher cast. They're so lovely. What a nice bunch. Yeah, I think we've interviewed Doug before when he was doing MCM and, you know, because I cover MCM as, as press and yeah. they pull them up occasionally into a sort of press room. And I think we've did, done Doug as, as part of the sort of roundtable stuff that we've done there. He was a really, really lovely guy. MCM obviously is where I predominantly know you from, but um, where are other places that people might have seen you? Because you're also Twitch stream as well. Yes, I am a Twitch streamer. I've been Twitch streaming for four years this month. So that was pre-pandemic. And I just did it because I thought, well, in between presenting, it'd be nice to just do something I love and build a little community and just chat with people. So the first game I ever streamed was Red Dead Redemption 2, right. which was great. I, kept, I, I You know what was really difficult? Talking and, and trying to ride your horse at the same time. <laughs> um, now I'm an expert at gaming and chatting at the same time, but th- that first month, I just could not stay on that horse. Now I'm fine. So yeah, Twitch stream as well. I freelance a lot. So, you know, I work a lot for NME. That's where I do all the celebrity stuff now, all the celebrity interviews. I still do BBC stuff, BBC Radio 5 Live. I'm on there once a month on Colin Murray's show. Right. Um, about music which is really lovely we do a midnight mixtape together once a month and then um done things like BAFTA and I've worked for Intel you know and then I do Scotland Comic Con or I did Scotland Comic Con in October I'm doing Wales and next year I'm booked in to do Emerald City in yes. Chicago and C2E2 in Chicago and of course MCM again so yeah I'm all over the place I'm everywhere I'm everywhere yeah and the uh, Emerald City is another repop one isn't it it's repop away on MCM as well He's, he's Emerald City and they do New York as well, don't they? Yes, I really want to do New York because it starts on October 12th, which is my birthday. <laughs> so I've said to them, it's my birthday next year. You have to do this for me. <laughs> so, and I'll be hopefully living in America at that time. And now what I'm trying to do is get all of my friends booked on as guests. So that's my birthday party. <laughs> so I'm basically trying to like organize my birthday party. I've told everyone, look, everyone, look, guys, if we all just appear at this event that's it sorted <laughs> I don't have to get those. so that uh, that's my plan I'm planning my birthday a year in advance David a year <laughs> well yeah and, and if you could get Repop to kind of fund the tickets then <laughs> Look, all, all I'm saying is it's a special birthday you know and uh, do a good panel so I'm like, come on, guys. So yeah, fingers crossed, fingers crossed. But um, yeah, like I'm doing that. That's what I've got in so far. And then I'm, I can't say anything else. Uh, but there's a few other American things that look really, really good that aren't read pop, but they look good. But I can't cool. say so yeah, lots of yeah, stuff. That's awesome. Um, we touched a little bit on MCM Birmingham, which of course I couldn't go to because I'm in America right now. I think this is the first MCM I've missed since Ooh. I started covering them, which was about five or six years ago. So yeah. and I was kind of gutted because you know, the Witcher guys are, are wonderful. Uh, but the big sort of headline guest, I guess, was Ron Perlman, which you did the interview for that. How was that? Because it sounds like you had a lovely time with him. I had a great time with Ron. I only have the best things to say about him he is wonderful we were waiting for him backstage and then he appeared and immediately was starting to chat and he leant against this table to sit down to chat to me and the table made a fart sound and that <laughs> that immediately made everyone laugh he went that wasn't me that wasn't me <laughs> and I went uh whatever Ron I'll take your word for it because I'm I'm quite cheeky you know I'm from Glasgow you know yeah. you, you can take the girl out of Glasgow and I and I'm talking to guests I'm very much myself I'm how I am right now with you so I went yeah whatever Ron but I'm going to move away from you because I can't I don't trust you and he was like whoa oh my god and, and and then I, I just went up and I introduced him. So that immediately sort of relaxed him. And, and he was absolutely wonderful, a really interesting man to speak to. We spoke afterwards and hung out afterwards. And he's a very genuine person. Yeah. Um, 
got lots of stories to tell and a very kind of like he's got a very comforting way about him which I really liked but what I got overall was he's just a very normal lovely genuine honest guy Mm -hmm. and I appreciate that in people and I appreciate that when I'm interviewing guests so yeah I love Ron nothing bad to say about him he's amazing he seems like a really really sweet guy and uh, I've I've heard a few interviews with some of the other Sons of Anarchy guys and they sort of they all still keep in touch it's very much still that biker gang is still sort of a group apparently that still talk to each other which is really awesome yeah I love that I love hearing that as well because it sort of makes you kind of love the fandom of it all more and it makes you like the show more to know that people are getting on behind the scenes as well but yeah I can't imagine people not getting on with Ron he's I can understand maybe how some people might feel a bit he's he's not overly exuberant yes you know and I think that might in the same way you know in the way that Jeff Goldblum's very exuberant they're just different sorts of people Ron's just very chilled I just thought yeah you know he's just a chilled dude you know if you just take him for what he is and he's, he doesn't talk super fast you've got to let him finish his sentences and yeah so it's just I think that that's the thing about interviewing people you need to really almost be quite chameleon in the way that you interact with people and really you have to be quite empathic and really sen- get a sense of the person and I, I've always been quite good at that because I've always liked to get on with people um, mm-hmm. I don't like not getting on with people so I think that really helps that's probably my people pleasing side well it is a bad thing sometimes has been a very good thing for this job for sure yeah it's an interesting one when it comes to interviewing because you're not really formally like me trained in it it's something you kind of have to pick up as you go along and that thing about the sort of figuring out what sort of personality the person is and working through that I guess, because there are some people which will give you those sort of short answers and, and it's trying to draw more out of them. It's trying to figure that out can be difficult sometimes. Can be, my God. I've had a few of those in my time. Thankfully, I can count count them in under one hand, you know, because most people I meet are fantastic. Yeah. Um, and I always I always get on with everyone. I've always, always got on with everyone, you know, on camera and off camera. Like I, I get on with folks. But I think the other thing that I've observed about hosts or presenters, I think when people are starting out, I would say, it's not about you you know you have to have no ego like you're not the main focus of attention and quite frankly I've never wanted to be um, and that I think that's what helps being on stage knowing that nobody cares about you (laughs) You nobody gives a crap about you and if anybody does and comes up to you afterwards well that's just lovely and you have a chat with people I love that some people are so touched that they would come up and speak to you you know but you're not there to be the focus and it's all about that other person and getting the best for the fans so especially if you're doing live it's different when you're doing things in front of camera for BBC or NME or something you've got editorial notes they need to hit for news pieces but when it comes to live you're just thinking okay if I was a fan what would I want to hear what stories would I want to hear and so I have to try and just draw that out it's not about me or anything and I think it's quite nice you know I'm I'm an introvert at heart, you know, so it's just, this is the job I like to do. So I quite like the fact that no one gives a crap about me. (laughs) It's it's really quite nice, which is why this process of being interviewed is very strange. (laughs) Yeah, no, I'm very much the same. It's the sort of learning when to shut up and let the other person talk. And like you say, when you're dealing with the stage stuff, it is also quite nice when you have people like the Michael Sheen interview that you did in London when you were on stage he was delightful and he wasn't really there to plug anything he was just there so you kind of could just ask him whatever you like you don't have to hit any particular points of like oh and this new project you've got coming you know that that was it was just lovely thank you I'm glad you were there like it was a really lovely that was really chill I've I've just started looking through that clip I was making clips of that he talks a lot so it's hard to get a two minute clip (laughs) which is it's lovely it's lovely when a guest talks lots but I was going oh god I can't find a two minute clip everything's four or five minutes for social media because I have to post things out but he was lovely I was very tired by that point at the, at the weekend as well and obviously in between comic cons I'm working on other projects so my voice was going I was <laughs> tired I really really was at the at the end of my energy levels and he said to me when are you okay are you you're feeling quite tired I was like before we were on I was like yeah I'm tired this weekend tired right? but he was lovely he's just a ni- nice Sky. I think with that kind of interview, you need to again. It's just it's just about thinking about the fans, you know. Yeah, and that's why I played that sort of fun game with them at the end because I thought that would draw some interesting chat out. You know, let's take a yeah. quote 
he said, um, let's see what he says for each quote about cats, about horror movies, about wanting to be taller and thinner. You know, all of those things that maybe you wouldn't read in a Guardian interview, you know, and I think yeah. that, that's what you want to get out of the live stuff. For sure. I like in general with all of my interviews, I like to try and get something that maybe hasn't been said before because a lot of it can be quite generic, you know? Yeah. I mean, the clips that I got out of that, there's about 15 clips which are up on our YouTube channel for, for that. And the one that seems to have hit most is when he's talking about you asked him a question about has David Tennant got any bad habits? And that clip has gone down really, really well. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I kind of like, yeah, it's because I was researching and I thought, God, they just get on so bloody well don't they <laughs> yeah and then i was like they're so lovely how can i turn this around and i thought oh yeah okay let's just ask him for some gossip <laughs> <laughs> um so i know that he would never say anything bad because they clearly do love each other very much yes. but um i knew that he would probably say something so it's just about trying to find that original angle because sometimes it's hard because they're just so, super super lovely so yeah that's why playing the game was good and stuff as well but that, I think that's probably the clip that I'll end up putting on my social media yeah. as well at some point in the next couple of weeks because he was just so lovely about David I, I I did love that bromance thing between them yes it has been great and they've just announced that Stage is uh, returning for a third season as well that's it's on Britbox UK randomly but um, yes the, I saw that I saw yeah. that trending on Twitter which made me think maybe I should put this clip up now <laughs> yes yeah absolutely <laughs> <laughs> Birmingham, you did uh, Steve G as well, who's from Peacemaker. And uh, he was also the, the stand-in for King Shark, I believe, on the uh, Suicide Squad movie. How yeah. was he to talk to? He was really nice. He was jet-lagged the whole weekend, the poor guy. Um, he was super jet-lagged, but he was very easy to talk to, uh, very relaxed. And, you know, I think we hit quite a few pertinent things. He liked talking about mental health. He suffers from panic attacks Aww. and he has done all his life. So we talked a little bit about that and also music because he loves music and he's also a musician and, and so am I. I'm a musician and also I love music. So I, it felt quite easy to be able to hit those points with him. We exchanged details afterwards because um, I have a podcast I'd love him to be on at some point called Real Imagined Futures where we imagine what happened to famous movie characters after their stories ended. Uh -huh. Oh, that's cool. Uh, so yeah, I've, I've, I've interviewed quite a lot of people for that and this the latest season is, is up and running now. So he was like, wow, that sounds great. I, I said to him, yeah, it's very improv -y. And he went, oh, I love improv. Let's do it. And I was like, okay, great. So <laughs> we've exchanged details and he was actually a really nice guy. Like lots of interesting stories to tell from set a very chilled and calm actually it's it's interesting how over the weekend you can talk to so many different sorts of personalities the Resident Evil cast are so different from Steve Ag. Steve Ag is so different from Ron Perlman and so on and The Witcher and so on and so forth so you kind of feel like you're splitting your brain a lot of the time in, yeah. in different ways but the Resident Evil panel was it was very it was ridiculous it started with the fart app that's what I'm going to say <laughs> never thought thought that that panel was start with that but we all I know Neil Newborn who plays Carl Heisenberg we're good friends and so he introduced me to Maggie and Stephanie Maggie's Lady Dimitrescu uh, Stephanie plays Claire Redfield and uh, Stephanie is daft as a brush <laughs> she is fantastic and uh, she kept talking about this fart app I don't know how we got into it in the green room <laughs> she kept talking about this bloody fart app and Ron was sitting in the green room and he he kept turning around going, oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> he kind of loved it. He was kind of chuckling. Um, so when we um, got on stage, Stephanie went, okay, okay, introduce us, but just say that I'm running late and then I'll come on and I'll say that I was in the bathroom and then I'll I'll do the fart app. And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and Neil was like, oh my God. So we did it. I was like, oh, I'm so sorry, you guys. You know, Stephanie's running late. She ran on and she went, oh, oh so sorry, you guys. Oh my God, oh my God. And then this little, <laughs> this little, this little fart noise and I just thought oh my god and she, she played she did the fart app several times and then backstage in the green room we were known as the fart girls <laughs> I uh, somehow got sort of like weaved into that we were talking about how we would be like the spice girls but we're like the fart girls um, <laughs> and uh, there's squeezy fart sad fart angry fart we're trying to give her each other names we're like who are you <laughs> like <laughs> what kind of fart are you are you wet fart <laughs> like oh my god so that's so that's the kind of nonsense that went on <laughs> backstage at Birmingham which I love you know I, I, this is yeah. why I love it it's 
you know, I've always felt like a stupid, weird, ridiculous person. So <laughs> being able to talk to stupid, weird, ridiculous people is a dream come true. Basically. Yes. Yeah. It's really fun. Getting a little hint of what goes on behind the scenes at these shows. <laughs> It's ridiculous. It's so ridiculous. It obviously, it always depends on who's there. But I've had some great nights out with people. I've had some like gut laughs, you know. And yeah, yeah. again, that school trip feeling—it feels like school because you're working all day. It feels like you're in class all day. You're working, and it's not bad work. It's fun work. Mm-hmm. But then you come and meet each other at lunchtime, and you're in a kind of funny headspace, you know. And it's almost like this decompression of being daft and silly and eating lunch and talking nonsense. So it does feel like school. I have to say. That. Yeah. So when it comes to the guest, do you have a favorite guest of sort of all time that you've interviewed? I don't know if that's unfair to, to, to say to other oh, people because no. they're all lovely, but do you have a particular one that really stands out for you? Oh my goodness. This is very, very, very difficult because I've interviewed, I was asked to send through something to an American Comic Con like last week and list all my Comic Cons and uh, I listed like loads. My God. Okay. Well, let's see. Um, I really, because I've interviewed, I've interviewed him quite a lot. I really enjoy, always enjoy speaking to Ross Marquand from the yeah. Walking Dead and also yes. Dan Fogler. They're both friends. You know, and it's easy to talk to friends, but Dan Fogler and I, he's got such a weird brain and I can just, I just look over at him during panels and he's like, got this little wistful look in his face and he's smiling and he just makes me laugh. Just looking at me makes me laugh. So those guys are easy. I would say very, very easy. I would say like one of my most fun times outside of just sort of like pals is probably Sean Astin. Yes. Um, I love Sean Austin. This is Birmingham 2019 before the pandemic. And I went into the green room and I said, hey, Sean, I'm Claire. I'm going to be interviewing you later. Straight away, got on like a house on fire. Couldn't stop talking. He was very relaxed and it felt like you were just talking to like uh, someone you'd known for years. So I'd see him and Simon Pegg as well. I I love Simon Pegg. That wasn't filmed, but um, Simon's a very genuine, down-to-earth person. So I definitely say like those two stick out for me. Sean Aston and, and Simon Pegg are so, so fun. And David Harbour as well. He was a very good laugh. So I'd say oh, those. Yeah. Ones. I was there for most of those interviews, actually. Um, the Simon Pegg panel is actually up on our YouTube channel. So, you, it? yeah. Mm. So you could go and catch the Simon Pegg panel up there. I, I, and I think that was before. MCM changed the rules so it might be yeah it is the whole panel that is up there so Ooh, okay so you, I'm gonna because I've not seen it since that's 2019 so yeah, I'm gonna go back yeah. and look at that okay yeah so the Simon Pegg panel is up there I can't remember whether we did Sean Astin at Birmingham I was definitely there for that I can't remember what clips went up whether that was clips or the full panel but that was great as well they were at Wales last year and it was all the Hobbits plus John Reese davis oh uh, god yeah they were, John Reese davis yeah. yeah, hilarious because they were messing around and there's the whole panel for that is up on the YouTube channel as well, but they were really, really funny. Oh, um, Sean Ass is lovely. Like doing doing the potatoes thing with Sean Ass and it was like <laughs> I highlight of my career potatoes. And we just started singing the potatoes song. And it's it's great. I'd say some of the most unexpectedly great ones have been like I mean I love the Red Dead crew I know them you know and I love mm-hmm. them the Red Dead Redemption folks are amazing I think they're absolutely incredible and also Jet from Gladiators right yes um, she is Diane Udale Diane who is Jet is an absolutely wonderful woman and she's so intelligent and she's so astute and uh, she has a lot of stories to tell and I was a big Jet fan as a kid watching Gladiators mm-hmm. so to meet her was incredible. She taught me how to do the hair flip. I was like, oh my God. (laughs) I mean, it wasn't as sexy, obviously. (laughs) um, I did the hair flip with Jet, you know, and I I really enjoyed talking to her. I I definitely would love to speak to her again at some point. So those were unexpected ones. And sometimes those unexpected ones turn out to be absolutely fantastic. So yeah, I enjoyed those a lot. That's awesome. Who would be your, apart from Jeff Goldblum, because he was your first one, who would be your sort of either your most nervous nerve-wracking guest or your most starstruck guest mm, i don't really get starstruck but i get nervous for sure yeah because i it's more like i always think god i don't want to look like an idiot i want to do a good <laughs> job you know 
Um, so I, I'm always get to. I think the only person I would get nervous over, like, and this is a pie in the sky dream. I would love to interview Arnold Schwarzenegger. Right. I would genuinely because I love him. Uh, I love all of his movies. And I grew up with all of his movies. That would make me starstruck. But oh yeah, okay. Jamie Lee Curtis and Linda Hamilton made me very nervous. Right. The Jamie Lee Curtis interview. The first time I interviewed her was for BBC The Social, and it was back I think in 2018. I, I want to say 2018. And um, I was waiting. It was a junket. And all of these people kept coming out of the room and going, oh, she's so scary. Oh, she's really <laughs> scary. And I had this set of questions. I looked down at them and I thought, and I did something I would never do. I scrapped them all and I rewrote them all. Wow. I don't know why I had a feeling. I had two minutes to go and I was like, I'm going to do this. I'm just going to take a chance. Why not? I, I kind of like to live by the seat of my pants, I guess. And um, they were all kind of very nervous. She's scary. She's nervous. She's a hard ass, you know. All, and I thought, oh, no. So I went in and my first question was, OK, you know, how do you balance the sort of badassery of Laurie Strode in this movie and what she is now, but with the trauma that she endured you know, back then. And she was like, thank you for talking about the trauma that she was. <laughs> he wanted to talk about the character and not just being some badass scream queen. Yes. Um, and so I immediately was relieved because she was like, you you articulated that so well. Thank you. And we had a great conversation. And when I left that room, she said, I heard her saying to her PR, she was really good. What was her name? Oh. And I was like, oh, that's, that's doing a good job is such a compliment. You know, I yeah. really do want to do the best job. So I'd say that. And then Linda Hamilton was off camera, but that was a written interview and uh, it was for NME. And um, I'm a big Terminator fan, like a huge Terminator fan. And I went in, I was super nervous, but immediately she sort of put her hand on my shoulder and she went, oh my God, you're so cute. And I was like, <laughs> thank you so much. And she kept hugging me and rubbing my shoulders and, and like, touching my leg and going you're just so adorable and I was like thank you <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't feel nervous after that and I, I thought she as well was an incredibly strong and interesting person um, those are two women that I was nervous about and at the end kept, completely felt at home and at ease because they were so great um, you know, I loved them but yeah God I was nervous yeah yeah now I can imagine there are a few things particularly in that junket style it can be very nerve wracking and do Depends what type of day you get there as well, because if they've been answering variations of the same 10 questions for the last five hours, it can be quite difficult to yeah. sort of pierce through. So if you can get something with that, it's really wonderful and fun. Hard knows. I mean, I did the Black Panther Wakanda Forever one recently. It was a couple of weeks ago. And I know that Florence Kazumba is German and I, I speak German. So I didn't let that. I know that I had, to, I mean, for editorial purposes, I had to ask certain questions, which is fine. But then at the end of the interview, as I left, I, I said, tschüss, viel Spaß which means bye have fun and she went oh Trista Deutsch like do you speak German and I was like yeah I'm busy and you know and I said to her I'm not I'm not going to speak German now but because you will not understand but I said yeah I speak German I studied German in university I was born in Stuttgart so then we had a kind of like nice moment and it's just about disarming people and it's about mm -hmm. being on a level with folks because uh, especially in the, the junket environment I hate I hate the junket yeah. environment because it's so you you feel like you're on this conveyor belt, you know, and and that's what it is. It's like you go next, then you, then you, then you, mm -hmm. and you never get to connect to anyone, and it's very tiring for the person who you're interviewing, you know, because it is it can be boring and tiring. Because I have done PR and publicity for people that are doing junkets, so I, I I know that it's a long day for them, you know. Yeah, that is the trickiest thing I think with doing the interviewing stuff is finding a way in, particularly in those junket settings, could be really really quite difficult. But if you manage to do it, you can get some lovely stuff because they suddenly come to life. It's like, oh great, it's not the same question that everybody else has already asked me. <laughs> I know it's it's just like I I wish sometimes I I don't mind being bound by editorial decisions because of, of course you're working for someone yeah. and I'm more than happy to do that but sometimes you do want to just break free a little bit you know when you get a 10 minute or a 15 minute interview you can put sort of more of yourself into but with the five minute ones I'm like okay I'll just do what I'm told you know but with the yeah. 10 15 minute ones yeah I always try and be a bit more personable yeah no absolutely 
So what have you got coming up next? Did sort of you got Wales this year and I know they've announced some panels for Wales. So that's going to be awesome because Wales has an amazing lineup every year. Yeah, I'm, I've never done Wales before, so I'm really okay. excited. I'm really excited. As I said, I've got quite a fair few folks that I know that are going to be there, so it's going to be fun. I'm trying to get more people that I know booked on so it can, it can be like a school holiday. <laughs> like, <laughs> let's, let's all like, let's all converge here because it's the last one of the year and it's Christmas. Um, I've got, yes, I've got that coming up. Um, I've got Seattle and Chicago in March. Oh, there's things I can't say, yeah. you know, like I've, I've been sworn to secrecy and I, I can't really talk about. That's all right. Um, but outside of the con stuff, I've got my podcast, which I relaunched again, Real Imagine Futures. That I'm doing with YouTuber Stuart Ashen. Um, ah. And that, that's real fun. Um, so we're on our second episode together. So that's really great. And then I'm always doing the BBC Radio 5 Live stuff. I'm always doing stuff for NME. So you'll always see me dotted about here and there. And I'm sure there'll be a junket or two that'll come up before Christmas. I never hear about them till last minute. No. So that's, that's the thing. I'll just I'll get told about them and I go, okay, cool. But for the most part, because it's been such a crazy and busy year, I'm going to do something I don't usually do, which is do nothing and read comics and watch <laughs> stuff. So when it hits about in a couple of weeks, to, well, about mid-December, I'm actually going to go against my nature and just stop. I don't really <laughs> stop. So that's going to be really nice because I think next year with my diary, which I can't really reveal to you all at the moment, I am going to be all over the place. Um, so I think I'm going to be like the littlest hobo next year. Um, we can awesome. all over the place. That'll be very cool. Well, last two questions for you. Yes. And these are the same that I always ask everybody, although I might tweak the last one slightly because it's it's usually aimed to people that actually work on TV shows. So uh, first question is, what TV shows are you watching at the moment? Okay, I'm watching Star Trek Strange New Worlds because I'm about to do the panel. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, but I'm really enjoying it because I love Star Trek. It is like so great. I just, you cannot disappoint me with anything in Star Trek. Even if some standards slip with some series, I still love it all, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so I've really been enjoying that. I think Ethan Peck is very good as Spock. Yeah. Um, I think he's actually really great. And I love Spock's storyline. And alongside that, I'm finally, finally catching up with the American office, which is hilarious. I know the outcome, I know what's going to happen because. I know I read about it and it's been out for many years, but I'm still loving it. So those are the two things I'm watching right now. Yeah, the Star Trek Strange New Worlds, I, I absolutely adore. It's been yes. just, it's the closest to the original Trek yes. that we've seen since they brought all the sort of new stuff back. And, and it's just been outstanding, I think, that series. I mean, I love Discovery as well, but it's very kind of different, whereas this is very traditional Trek with a modern twist. And I think they've done a wonderful job with that. That's why I've taken to it. You know, mm -hmm. I think that's why, yeah, I think it feels comfy. You know, it feels like a comfort yeah. blanket. You're like, oh, this feels nice. And, you know, I like the pace of it. So I'd say that, oh, yeah, I'm watching the last episodes of The Walking Dead as well, obviously, because I have to keep up with that. So, yes. Um, and then that comes out, the last one comes out this this week. So I'm kind of curious to see how they're going to end it because it's such a mammoth series. Um, I love the comics so much, though. I mean, I started reading the comics way before the series even started mm -hmm. you know, years and years ago. And I stopped reading the comics at some point because there's so many but I have to get back into them and finish them I I think the Walking Dead comic book series is one of the best comic book series ever made like I just love the writing so much I think Robert Kirkman is brilliant yeah it's a great comic book series it's a really good TV show I actually do a weekly Walking Dead UK podcast as well so I do that with the guys over at Entertainment Talk and so we cover the show every week although we're actually delaying the finale by a week because I'm over here and it's Thanksgiving so <laughs> Um, oh yes! Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah! So wait, it's going out. It's going out the, at the same time, but you're delaying your podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going out the same time. It'll be going out next week. It's the because when we're recording this, it will be out next week, and then. Oh. But, but I'm going to wait until I'm back in the UK to do the sort of final episode of the of the Ooh. podcast. So 
Yeah. That's exciting. God, the final episode of the podcast and of the TV series. Crazy. How yeah. do you want it to end? Who do you think is going to die? Well, given last week's episode, um, <laughs> we were kind of talking about this on the on the podcast this week. We were like, I think Ezekiel will probably go because of the way he's been talking and he's lived way past his comic book death so i think that's kind of likely the the slight problem that you have is there are a bunch of characters in there that can't die because they've got spin-offs so so there's just that who do you want to die <laughs> uh, well that's the difficult thing you sort of don't want anybody to die out of the main cast but i mean curry is uh, a phenomenal actor and we uh, yeah, we've interviewed Kari Payton a few times before, and it would make sense if Ezekiel went out saving Jerry. Right. Um, okay. Because K- Kari and Cooper, I don't know whether you've ever interviewed those two together. They are hilarious. No, and I really want to. Dan's always said, Dan's always spoke very highly of Cooper. Yeah. Um, I've not met them yet. So, yeah, I've met David Morrissey, obviously I know Ross and Dan, um, and I can't remember who's who they've got at Wales, and they've got a few. I think David Morrissey's at Wales again. So, yeah, I'd like to. They seem like a good laugh. Yeah, it? yeah. Kari and Cooper are, are, are d- absolutely delightful when they're together. There are a few interviews up on the um, YouTube page for those guys, but they're so close, those two, that I would love them to sort of be able to kind of go off together, but I think with Ezekiel's story, it makes sense if he maybe sacrifices himself to save Jerry because Jerry's in a quite a precarious situation. Uh, mm. And and so that maybe is the one character I could see going. Gabriel possibly as well, but I, I don't mm. know. And I want <laughs> someone really unexpectedly huge to die, actually. I don't want anyone to die, obviously, but at the same time, I feel as a viewer... I like it when the stakes are very high, you know, and when some when things come out of left field, I think that's what makes very good TV. So you feel like someone's safe. You would never imagine it. You know, maybe you're thinking, oh, what makes sense for these people to die, but not this person or these people. I want a, a good shocking ending. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I really want a shocking ending, you know? Yes, it's, it's going to be interesting to see how they end it and whether they manage to do it satisfactorily enough when you know a bunch of the characters can't die because they're coming back in spinoffs. So, That's the thing. I kept thinking, well, you're not going to die and you're not going to die. So yeah. what's going on? You know, yeah. so you you kind of you kind of know, but we'll see. We will yeah. see. I'm I am looking forward to it. So I thought the last episode was quite good, and it's good to see look back and stuff like that as well. So yeah, it was. Yeah, I enjoyed it. So yeah, I'm watching that as well. I forgot about that as well. Yeah, yeah. Very looking forward to the end of that as well. So last question for you: If you had the opportunity to, I usually say work on any TV show, past, present, or future. Which show would it be? But I mean, I guess in your case, it would be interviewing cast from any TV show, something present day, something from the past or some future project, maybe, what would it be? Mm, what a good question. I already said I'd, I'd love to interview Arnold Schwarzenegger just as a, this yes. is a thing. Oh, uh, any, okay, let's go, let's go past. Okay, let's like delve into my geeky, geeky past. I would have loved to have interviewed the Golden Girls. Wow. Um, yeah. I really think that that would have been quite incredible to have met them and spoken to them. I also, in its pomp, when the X Files was at, its, at the height of its right. popularity, um, I would have liked to have interviewed Duchovny and Gillian Anderson, David Duchovny, uh, Gillian mm-hmm. Anderson. Of course, that could still happen. I mean, they're still around. But like back then, that was one of my absolute favorite shows on TV. And then also, just generally speaking, as individuals, yeah, Arnold. Sigoni Weaver, I'd love to interview her. But if you were going to ask me that uh, working on a show question, I would say to you, I've always wanted to have my own chat show. So <laughs> that's I have one on Twitch and many yes. amazing people have appeared on it. And now it's a live show at Insomnia Games Fest and perhaps elsewhere. Watch this space 2023. Oh, cool. Uh, so I am working on that, but I've always wanted to have some kind of chat show, but a chat show that isn't kind of in the traditional sense, you know, like you come on and you do a little bit of like this sort of weird pre-scripted stand-up. I kind of would like it to be somewhere between semi-normal and something that is surreal and odd. Um, and the Twitch <laughs> chat show that I do is, is sort of scripted and it's this weird world. We have a talking reindeer and... You know, <laughs> 
you know it's so it's really weird like it's a and we've got weird adverts weird like infomercials and then you know that we have actual guests that come on and it's that's you know normal that's that's not most normal part of the show is having mm-hmm. interviews so I think something like that would be a dream so yes. yeah, I, I, I that was way more than what you probably expected <laughs> but there you go there, those are all my hopes and dreams David yes awesome well I hope you manage to achieve them particularly next year when uh, all this stuff kicks off so that would be awesome um people want to find you your uh where, whereabouts could they find you you're on twitch you're on youtube is it we claire on all of them it's we claire on twitter mm-hmm. and then on instagram twitch and youtube it's we claire here now i will say this on my youtube you will find some normal stuff but i do like parody songs you're gonna find some <laughs> weird stuff on there like my own versions of christmas songs and last year i, re- I released not like i released anything but uh, we, i had a song called christmas in the matrix um, <laughs> so yeah you can go or, or i've got like i released my rugrats drum and bass version of the rugrats song on there <laughs> Uh, all written by me all it's all my music so yeah so you can go if you want to see where my weird brain lives that's twitch and youtube and then anything work is twitter and instagram awesome so go and check out claire over on those things as well it's been lovely chatting with you and good luck with everything i will be seeing you at wales anyway so uh because i will hey. be there so nice. i will see you there and uh, i will be recording a number of the panels i think for that as well so um yeah i'm very much looking forward to that Have an awesome rest of the day and uh, I will see you in a few weeks. Thanks. (laughs)